It was the early 90s when I thought like most anglers do and dreamed of getting my own lakes, but it was mainly because I wanted to develop a research and development centre. We have the warehouse and offices and our own lakes all on one site so we could test the gear. But alongside that, I had a massive passion for understanding carp and learning about carp, so you know, it was a hobby and a big thing for me that I wanted to you know, create these wonderful fisheries. And then in the late 90s, that dream come true. Dug the lakes, waited three years in a drought for the water to fill them. At one stage, I thought, what have I done? You know, as my mates were roaring round it like a quad track. You know, I thought, I'm never going to fill the lakes, but I got them filled again, and you know, the long journey started. It's been fascinating seeing the way the lakes have developed since their creation. The biggest thing for me has been seeing all the wildlife arrive. I remember one November evening, me and Nigel Bobway were down and we were so excited because three juvenile tawny owls were hunting this bank actually for the trees were on it. You know, it was amazing seeing them, but what I got out of it that now all the, uh, you know, the food items, the rodents and that were here for them. You know, so it was all coming together. You know, it was making a perfect environment. Why am I opening the lakes? Quite simply, to raise funds. I'm taking more of a back step now in Nash Tackle, and my last big project is to create day ticket waters of the highest possible standard for anglers to fish. You know, I'd love to have a portfolio of day ticket waters as good as the church and the cops. So to do that, we need to raise money. And the best way for me to raise money is to open up the doors of, in effect, my back garden, although it's a big back garden, and let people fish for these fish. I trust people who understand I'm and denied about how to do this, you know, open my precious lakes to the great British public and I guess European anglers. What I've decided to do for the first weeks, we're going to auction it, uh, just hoping some people will pay massive amounts of money, which can then go back into the fund. From then on, we're going to open mid-July to let them recover from spawning, and that would be on a five-day holiday basis booking. We haven't quite decided on the amounts then, but say it'd be five-day holidays, Monday to Friday. Uh, we have a lodge, shower, kitchen in it. Uh, we have loos up in the car park. So all the facilities and the 24-hour bailiff on duty at all times. I guess now we've decided to open the lakes, the burning question for everyone is what's in them? Well, the church, I guess there's about 70 carp in there now. There's five fish that have either done 50 or are on the edge of doing it. It's most famous for its fantastic heavy scoured to fully scoured carp. Uh, they go up to around 40 incredible fish. If we have a good spring, there could be 10, 40s in there as well. The cops, that's done eight different 50s. The late record 61 mirror, although we think we may have lost that, we're not sure, but the wood carving's the one that just come from nowhere, come out last autumn at just under 60 pound. I'd be very surprised if that's not well over 60 this year. Amongst the other fish, there's probably six to ten forties, and the babies as well, the homegrowns that have come through. So a lot of fish to go at, considering how small it is. One of the most amazing things for me about having these lakes has been watching the sheer joy and pleasure when someone has had a, a chunk, you know, a PB. It's a fact that over 200 anglers have caught their PBs from here. So everyone who comes this year, I look forward to meeting you and I hope to see a big smiley face when you catch a chunk. <laughs>